Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Wellcast. I'm Howard Jacobson, Chief of Behavioral Science at Wellstart Health, co-author of Sick to Fit and host of the Plant Yourself podcast. Today on my long walk run, I was listening to the Rich Roll podcast and his guest was David Epstein, who wrote a book called Range. And I believe the subtitle is something like why generalists will succeed or will triumph in a specialized world. And one of the things that really struck me was um, his distinction between procedures and what I will call in the interest of alliteration principles and specifically about like how we get better at things and what kinds of things we're trying to get better at. So for to give you an example of something procedural that you could get better at, it would be shooting a free throw in basketball. So or, or uh, let's say serving in tennis. So or let's just say free throw in basketball. Let's keep it simple. So when you're at the free throw line, it's everything is the same every single time. Essentially, I know that, you know, there's different uh, venues and different fans and screaming and different lighting. But basically, let's just say you're at the line. It's the exact same distance from the rim. The basket itself, the rim with the cloth hanging down, is the same size everywhere. The backboard is the same size everywhere, assuming you're playing in some sort of, uh, you know, competitive arena. And the ball is the same, same weight, same size, same feel, same bounce. And so procedurally, what you have to do is get it once and then just do that every single time. And so the closer you get to that, the better you get. And so it's a formula and it's it's an example. And one of the things that, that Epstein said was that the procedural things eventually are going to all be done by AI. Like maybe, you know, we're not going to watch AI play basketball, but you can you could imagine building a robot that would hit a free throw swish every single time. I don't think it would be that difficult. And you could probably calibrate it to, you know, if you tell it move 10 degrees to the right, three feet back, it could probably score from anywhere on the court uh, reliably. Whereas for a human, that, that would be you know, much more challenging. So think about like, the things that we're trying to learn that are procedural. Um, they aren't that big a deal, even if it's something very, very complex, you know, uh, a type of, of a type of surgery or working on an assembly plant where all the variables are the same every single time, more or less. That is where, where you get into proceduralism. Now, the problem comes when we've mastered a procedure and we don't we haven't mastered the principles behind it. So suppose we're really good at shooting baskets, but now somebody gives us um, a baseball to try to throw and we've never picked up a baseball and we got to get the baseball through the basket that could present a whole nother set of problems, right? Because I only know how to, how to throw it like this and a baseball is too small for that. So now I've got to learn a whole other set of muscle uh, skills in order to throw a baseball. And the baseball could could veer right or left. And it would take me a while to uh, to be able to do that. Uh, there's a great story by the, uh, the the tennis player and con man huckster Bobby Riggs, who um, is, is famous for in the 1970s being a male chauvinist pig and taunting the top female players and saying that even though he was he was old, and way past his prime and half blind, he could still beat them because men were superior to women. And he managed to uh, defeat Margaret Court, but he got crushed by Billie Jean King. Yay, Billie Jean. But uh, he has a he wrote a book about his his colorful life. And he told a story about he, he bet one of the world's best table tennis players that he could beat this guy at table tennis and he was only going to do you know, he was going to give herself like give himself like six or eight weeks leeway. Hey, Elizabeth. And so the only rule was he got to choose the paddles. 
And otherwise, it was going to be played, you know, regular ping pong balls, regular ping pong table, good, this good lighting. And in six or eight weeks, whatever it was, he was going to defeat this world champion table tennis player um, by choosing the paddles. And the day came and Bobby Riggs opened up his suitcase and pulled out two cast iron frying pans that that's what they were going to play with. And Bobby Riggs had been practicing for two months with a cast iron frying pan, and he was able to win because the person he was playing uh, procedures were fine for table tennis in all the parameters that he knew, but they did not include a three or four or five pound paddle made of iron with a slippery handle and and all sorts of weird crenellations. So what does this have to do with anything? Well, it's one of the reasons that at Wellstart we don't give recipes and we encourage people to not rely on recipes or buy a lot of cookbooks or go online and search for recipes because recipes are kind of the ultimate in food proceduralism. People really think that recipes will save them. Someone says, OK, well, I'm going to go plant based. First thing we tell them, OK, buy this cookbook or these cookbooks or go to this website. And I think that's a mistake. I think, you know, recipes can give us great ideas. And once we have the principles, then the recipes can fit into a wider context. And then we can say, oh, OK, well, I understand this is basically a salad. And here's a bunch of things I could put in the salad. And here's some stuff that people figured out really goes well together. You know, this dill and the cashew sauce. And oh, that's really cool. But if we start with recipes or meal plans or any of the crutches that we give people or ask people to use right away so that here's how you know, let's make it easy for you. Just learn this. Just, just do this. Sign up for my app, get my meal plans. Just oh, you don't have to think you just shop and here's the recipes. Just do it. We're sure we're giving them quick wins, short term success, but at the expense of long term success, because what happens when your meal plans run out or you get tired of them or you discover that the meal plans aren't perfect for you? There's different people. You have different tastes. You might have a gluten allergy and they, like whatever it is. When, when you are relying on a set of procedures, the universe is going to give you a cast iron frying pan for a paddle. And if you haven't been practicing with all sorts of things, so, you know, if this pink tennis player, if this table tennis player had been smart and had realized who Bobby Riggs was, he probably would have practiced with cast iron pans, with LP, with the LP records, uh, with pillows with his hands, with bowling balls, whatever. Right. Remember that that uh, that great doctored video of uh, Bruce Lee playing stellar table tennis with nunchucks. Right. So that is an example of principle. So that's why we want to tell people here are the principles of eating. The principles are plants, Cut them up, steam them, boil them, bake them, right? Spread them on things, put them in wraps, and stay away from those recipes. If you're the sort of person who will then say, okay, I've got my recipes. Now I'm good. Now I'm going to just follow these recipes. Okay. So instead of that, instead of these quick wins that end up leading to long term, um, fragilization. Where, OK, I've, I've, can, I, I've got 25 cookbooks and I, by the way, I have about 50 plant based cookbooks because I have a podcast. And for a while I was doing a lot of cookbook authors because I didn't understand this. I thought, you know, cookbooks are what everybody needs. And I love recipes and I'm a foodie. And so it's very exciting for me to get all these cookbooks. I've got about 50 of them. I use about five. Um, I'll maybe use one a week and at this point in my life, I have I understand the principles well enough that a new procedure simply gets folded in. And it's very rare that I follow a recipe 100 percent all the way. So I'll give you an example. Um, we have a, a bumper crop harvest of like those thin, pinky, purpley, whitey eggplants, uh, like, you know, sort of like Japanese eggplants. They're long. They're sort of pink, purple, white. 
and we got way more than I, I've ever had before. So I wanted a recipe, something that I could make on almost a daily basis and just make this thing. And I was doing a lot of like uh, sort of eggplant parm, like coating, you know, slicing them, coating them with a batter, putting them in the air fryer. They're delicious, but it takes a lot of time. It's very messy and I wasn't getting to get through them that way. So I went to I knew I wanted to do sort of like an Asian um, eggplant, like, a, you know, an Asian sauce. So I went and I looked and I found, you know, Kathy Hester's uh, slow cooker cookbook and there's an Asian recipe in there. And I looked at it and I understood, OK, so it's got and here's the here's the ingredients. You know, there's soy sauce. There's like agave or maple syrup. There is um, something spicy. There are some there's um, her, you know, golden DIY golden gravy or a, um, a bouillon cube for kind of umami. And so I said, OK, I got it now. I don't have agave. I got some maple syrup. I'll use that. Um, I don't want to put in the sesame oil, but I'll put I'll throw sesame seeds on top when it's done. And I took the recipe and basically adapted it into principles. But now I don't need to look at the recipe I can go, OK, Asian. I know exactly kind of the things that, t that tend to go into, OK, um, shredded onion, shredded garlic or uh, minced garlic and uh, and shredded ginger also gives it that that flavor. Um, but I'm not following the recipe, nor do I feel like I have to, nor I don't know if Kathy's watching right now, nor do I think Kathy would be upset if, if she found out that I used her recipe as inspiration to generate a, the meal on principle. And what happens when I run out of eggplant and Kathy's dish call, is called Asian eggplant? Oh, well, well, I could never use that for squash, right, or broccoli or carrots and onions. Of course I could. And so therefore, we, we can we can fold in procedures when we understand the principles. So if you're starting out and you feel like I need to get a whole bunch of cookbooks. If you really feel that way, so get one cookbook, look at a single recipe, something you'd like, and then see if you can extrapolate it into principles. So, for example, one, one principle that is very, very common is let's call it the the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So peanut butter and jelly sandwich, what does that include? It includes a, a surface to hold the things. It's usually some sort of grain. It includes a sweet. So that's the jelly and it includes a fat. So guess what else is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? A pizza. <laughs> Same thing. It's got the crust. It's got the Swedish tomato sauce and a traditional pizza has sort of, a, you know, the fatty cheese on top. It's the same dish. Now, so if you want to make something. Right, that, that is, you know, you don't need to go find a vegan cookbook for analogs. All right. So we can say, well, for the for the uh, for the instead of jelly, I know I want to do whole food, so I'll slice up bananas or I'll take a ripe peach and, and, and mash it down in there or some dates. I'll chop them up real thin or some raisins for bread. I can think about, OK, so I'm going to have a, some sort of grain or a starch or I can think, of, well, it's it's going to be some sort of a wrap. So what if it's hummus on a lettuce leaf uh, with chopped up cherry tomatoes? It's the same thing. And once you understand the principle, recipes then become good ideas and inspiration as opposed to crutches that if you take them away, you fall on your face. So that's why we discourage recipes and meal plans. And that's why I hope that as you embark on your journey, you seek out mastery over broad principles so that you never end up losing a bet to Bobby Riggs because he came up with a paddle that you hadn't thought about. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a great day.